I grew up in a town called Pleasanton in California, which is uh, East Bay uh, in the Bay mm-hmm. Area. And um, in the late seventies, when I was in, uh, when I was just starting uh, junior high, I was in sixth grade, and I remember um, we were asked to do a report on a musical instrument, and so, um, and we had to make the instrument out of household items, and so. At the time, I was really into making balsa wood airplanes, where you take the, you make the frame out of balsa wood, and uh-huh. you take paper, you stretch it on that frame. So I got to thinking I'd take a pie tin and get that paper to stretch on uh, the pie tin, a stick, rubber bands for frets, nylon fishing string. And I only knew it was going to be a banjo because I remember going over to my grandparents' house and they always had Hee Haw or the Beverly Hillbillies tuned on. Hmm. And um, so I decided to do the banjo. I made the banjo and I did the report. And the more I read about the instrument, the fact that it came from Africa and had this really interesting, rich history, um, it really... it. it it enticed me. I mean, I think all kids should have to do a report on whatever instrument they really want to do and like understand where it comes from. Um, so I happened to make one <laughs> pretty crummy little banjo, but it was uh, interesting. And I, and I knew a bit about the instrument and the different genres that you could play it in. I didn't know what those genres were. I didn't know what bluegrass or Celtic music or Dixieland music was, but I searched it out. And I got a real banjo on my 12th birthday and just um, found I, I really dug the sound of the instrument. And uh, my first teacher introduced me to Bluegrass and Earl Scruggs, as well as the Eagles, who had a banjo, and the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, who had John McEwen. And um, I just really dug it. I would spend hours a day playing the banjo. And how did you learn? Did you did from you know Mel Bay books or homespun tapes or things like that? Or no, just I, I, we actually there was one guy who taught banjo in Pleasanton, and he would come in from San Francisco to teach. I was his only student. It came down to being you know, but he he knew mm-hmm. that I was really into it, and so bless his heart, he just came every week and made sure I had a banjo lesson until he just couldn't do it anymore because he was a young film student. A guy mm-hmm. named, what was his name? Dan Laughlin. Really nice guy. Um, and then I went from him to another teacher that taught classical guitar mainly. But he, So I learned some classical guitar from him and then moved on to have to go deeper into the bay. Uh, found someone who taught at the fifth string music. And right. um, from there, I went to Rick, Rick Shubb, who makes the Shubb Capos. I okay. took lessons from him until he said, I'm done. I can't teach you anything more. And I went to a bud of mine <laughs> named Abram Siegel, who's an incredible Bay Area banjo picker and has a great mind for music theory and jazz theory and introduced me to a lot, just kind of opened my mind to all kinds of theoretical stuff that I, I applied to the banjo when I was in high school. Okay. And how old were you when you won that first, uh, that first Winfield contest? I was uh, 19. Okay. Yeah, I remember going to fiddle contests quite a bit and um, seeing these fiddle players work up these tunes and these arrangements, and they'd get a free fiddle or a nice little cash prize. I was like, I want to do that. (laughs) So I remember um, my old friend Mike Bubb, a wonderful bass player, but a killer banjo player, um, told me, he said, you should enter the banjo the national banjo contest all you got to do is play a handful of tunes i was like all right i'll work them up and my folks flew out with me to uh, winfield kansas 